welcome to my first video lesson under the course biology and in today's video lesson i'll be teaching on a very important topic in biology and it is called the coordinating system now the coordinating system is basically a system that controls how the body works and majorly there are two types so the first of the coordinating system is called the hormonal coordinating system okay the hormonal coordinating system and the other coordinating system is called the nervous coordinating system okay it's called the nervous coordinating system now moving further in the course of today's class i'll be teaching on just one of the coordinating system and i'll be talking about the hormonal coordinating system from the word hormonal it means we'll be talking about hormones now talking about the hormonal coordinating system it requires or it deals with the transmission of chemical substances this is something we must take note under the hormonal coordinating system so in the course of today's class we'll be discussing on just the hormonal coordinating system so first point on under the hormonal coordinating system it requires or it deals with the transmission of chemical substances okay it deals with the um, transmission of chemical substances and these chemical substances are in the form of hormones okay these chemical substances are in the form of hormones so this is something we must take note of now it must be noted under the hormonal coordinating system responses to stimuli okay responses to stimuli is slow when we are talking about the hormonal coordinate system responses to stimuli now you want to ask what does stimuli mean it means actions so responses to these actions is slow during hormonal coordinating system now first of all i said for hormonal coordinating system it deals with hormones and these hormones are chemical substances it does not deal with electrical impulses when we talk about electrical impulses we come to the nervous coordinating system so for hormonal it deals with chemical substances okay while for the nervous coordinating system it deals with electrical impulses so the point i'm trying to say here now under the hormonal coordinating system responses to this stimuli is slow so responses to action here is slow and moving over to another point under the hormonal coordinating system now for the hormonal coordinating system response may last okay may last for some time what does it mean it means that basically this action that has occurred already may last for some time so that is for that so in the course of this class i'm going to explain further what these statements actually mean now under the hormonal coordinating system there's something we have to take note of and what is it called it is called hormone and remember these hormones are what chemical substances and another of the points we have to take note of and under the hormonal coordinating system is a term called secretion what is secretion this is the release or this is the production of chemical substances by some certain glands in the body this is something we must take note of secretion is the production of useful substances by some certain glands in the body now we have various glands of the body okay these are the glands now we have majorly two types of glands okay we have the exocrine gland okay and we have the endocrine glands these are the two glands these glands actually produce substances now for the exocrine gland it is also called the duct gland so for this exocrine gland to release these chemical substances it passes 
through a dot. Okay, it has a passage in which it comes out. Why, for the endocrine gland, it is also regarded to be called ductless gland. So, what does it mean? It means that these chemical substances in the form of hormones that will be released basically will be uh, secreted directly into the bloodstream without the passage of any ducts. So, basically, for glands, these are the two major glands that actually produce substances. And these glands are of two types. We have the exocrine gland and we have the endocrine gland. Remember I said exocrine gland is also called the duct gland and endocrine gland is also called the ductless gland. Now you want to ask, what does this exocrine gland produce? What does this endocrine gland produce. Now, it must be noted that for the exocrine gland, a good example is the salivary gland. For the exocrine gland, a good example is the salivary gland. And what does the salivary gland produce? It produces saliva. Okay, for saliva to be produced, it needs to pass through a duct. Now, what or what are some examples under the endocrine gland? We have various examples. For the first of them, it is called the pituitary gland. This is something we must take note of. The pituitary gland is an endocrine gland. And the pituitary gland produces what we call pituitary hormones. Okay? Pituitary gland produces what we call pituitary hormones. Remember, Salivary gland produces saliva. Pituitary gland produces pituitary hormones. Now, remember I said the pituitary hormone is an example of an endocrine gland, while the salivary gland is an example under the exocrine gland. Exocrine, duct gland. Endocrine, ductless gland. So, that is for that. Now, what are hormones? Hormones are chemical substances that are being released directly into the bloodstream to some certain organ in the body. These organs are called the target organs. So for these hormones to be secreted, it goes directly into the target organ. So this is something we must take note of. Now in the course of today's class, I'll be teaching more on the endocrine gland. And a good example of the endocrine gland is the pituitary gland. So we start with that. You can see this diagram of the endocrine system. This is the endocrine system. Okay? This is the endocrine system. So I'll be labeling all of these uh, organs in the body and we, and we study together their functions and also their importance. So we we'll start with the first organ here and basically it has a name now this is a gland and this gland is called the pituitary gland okay this gland is called the pituitary gland it must be noted that the pituitary gland is found at the base of the forebrain this is the base of the forebrain so basically the pituitary gland is found at the base of the four brains. So let's quickly discuss on the pituitary gland. Now you have to jot down this important point. First of all, for the pituitary gland, I said it is located at the base of the forebrain. You know, we have various regions of the brain, and this is one of them, the forebrain. We have the midbrain and we have the hindbrain. But for the pituitary gland, it's found at the base of the forebrain. You can see it here. And also, the pituitary gland is also called the master gland, okay? The pituitary gland is also called the master gland. Why is it called the master gland? Because its secretion influences the activities of other glands. That is why it's called the master gland, because its secretion 
influences the activities of other glands. These are other glands which we will discuss soon. So it must be noted that the pituitary gland is also called the master gland. Now on the pituitary gland, it produces pituitary hormones. Okay, the pituitary gland produces pituitary hormones. So what are the pituitary hormones? They are, are grouped into two. The first of them is called the anterior, okay, pituitary hormones, and the other is called the posterior, okay, the posterior pituitary hormones. These are the two pituitary hormones, the anterior pituitary hormones and the posterior pituitary hormones. The, uh, under the anterior pituitary hormones, we have various hormones, and under the posterior, we have various hormones, which I'll be listing and explaining their function. So the first of the hormone under here is called the growth hormone. Okay, this is called the growth hormone. And the other hormone under here, we have the follicle-stimulating hormone. Okay, which is basically known as FSH, the follicle-stimulating hormone. Now, the next of the hormone under the anterior pituitary hormones, we have the likes of the luteinizing hormone okay this is another example under the anterior pituitary hormone which is called lh this is called luteinizing hormone now what is the next hormone thyroid hormone okay this is one and lastly we have prolactin okay this is another hormone it's called the prolactin hormone so these are the hormones under the anterior pituitary hormones now talking about the posterior pituitary hormones we have hormones like oxytocin and we have hormones like adh what is adh antidiuretic hormones antidiuretic hormones antidiuretic hormone oxytocin are hormones under the posterior pituitary hormones remember there's a gland that produces these hormones and what is that gland it's called the pituitary gland the pituitary gland where is it located it's located at the base of the forebrain and basically it's also called the master gland because its activities uh, influences the activities of other glands so that is that so in the course of today's lesson i'll be discussing their functions and also the function of the posterior pituitary hormones now, the first hormone I'll be discussing is the growth hormone. Now, it must be noted that the growth hormone is also called the somatotropic hormone. Okay, the growth hormone is also called the somatotropic hormone. This is something we must take note of. The growth hormone is also called the somatotropic hormone. And the growth hormone helps during the um, growth and enlargement of body cells. Okay, it helps during the growth okay the growth and enlargement of body cells these are the function of the growth hormone recall the growth hormone is classified under the anterior pituitary hormones now let's talk about another hormone which is called prolactin hormone okay the prolactin hormone now these hormones help during the production of milk in pregnant women okay it helps during the production of milk in pregnant women okay this is the function of the prolactin hormone okay in pregnant women okay that is for the prolactin hormone other hormones mentioned we have the likes of the anti-diuretic hormone okay we have the likes of the anti-diuretic hormone which is called adh hormone now for the anti-diuretic hormone it helps during the reabsorption of water by the kidney okay it helps during the reabsorption of water by the kidney and recall the kidney is an organ okay it helps during the reabsorption of water by the kidney that's the function of the adh hormone which is called antidiuretic hormone so that is for that now, moving further, we have other examples of hormones mentioned earlier. We have the likes of oxytocin. 
Now, oxytocin is another hormone. Now, oxytocin is an hormone that helps to induce birth. Okay, oxytocin it helps to induce birth. That's the function of oxytocin. Now, moving further, we have other hormones like the LH hormone called the luteinizing hormone. Now, the luteinizing hormone basically helps during ovulation. The luteinizing hormone helps during ovulation. So, let's talk about that. Now, let's talk about the luteinizing hormone. It helps during ovulation. Okay? Ovulation. And what is this? It's basically a procedure in which the matured egg moves or it's released into the what? Fallopian tube. Now, this matured egg is in the form of the ovum. Okay, whereby the ovum is released into the fallopian tube. Okay, this process explains ovulation and it is controlled by the luteinizing hormone. Now, it must be noted that the ovum, the ovum is the largest, okay, single cell of the body. Okay, the ovum is the largest single cell of the body. So basically, all of this explains the pituitary gland. Recall, the pituitary gland is found here at the base of the forebrain. And also, it's also called the master gland. Why is it called the master gland? This is because its secretion influences the activities of other glands. So that is all for the pituitary gland. These are some important points you take note of. Recall, I said that the pituitary gland is an endocrine gland. You can see this is the endocrine system. So that is all under the pituitary gland. If you like this video, do well to hit the subscribe button and also share my video with your friends. Thank you very much and God bless you.